as soon as I touched the ball, I was like, I want to be a professional rugby player. This is a sport for me. I want to do this. This is it. And I remember in the car on the way back with my mum, I'm like, I'm going to be a professional rugby player. And obviously she probably laughed at the time. But when I, <laughs> when I, when I said it, I had, you know, true like conviction. And that was kind of my sole aim in life. Harlequins Academy, I think it only started at under 16. So I was kind of like the first one from that age group to, to kind of be put in um, with the under 16. So I think a few weeks later, I went down to, I think it was Dawkins Rugby Club. I was pretty nervous. Um, and I remember I was running off with the backs then at the time. And then Colin was like, no, 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 you're, you're a tired prop now. I was like, oh, great. <laughs> Bearing in mind, I've got like moldies and, um, and blue predators on. So, uh, so yeah, and it kind of just started from there. I think something that's always kind of came na- naturally to me is, is, is kind of like running with the ball and passing and, and offloading that side of the game. I've always found a lot natural. Um, Whereas the other stuff is taken quite a long time for me to to adjust and 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 find my way in terms of like scrummaging, rucking, mauling. At that age, I was I was very very angry, uh, very competitive. Obviously, I'm still very competitive now, but probably um, got the balance wrong. I just wanted to, you know, prove everyone wrong um, and show them that I could become a professional rugby player. So I had quite a big big chip on my shoulder growing up. One thing that um, I've loved my time at Harlequins is is the, like our identity and the way we played, especially in probably like my first seven years at the club, um, mainly influenced by Connor and how we wanted us to play. You'd call it the Quins way. And that was very off, uh, you know, a massive emphasis on offloads and running the ball from anywhere and kind of playing heads up rugby and playing what you see. And for me, that kind of... Um, that kind of suited me and and there's been a few occasions that I have kicked the ball um, and they have actually turned out all right and then there's sometimes it's been an absolute nightmare but uh, Connor, you know, he's, he, he was instrumental in my um, development at, at such a, um, you know, an early age. He never kind of berated me for making those mistakes or trying things or silly offloads. He he was kind of all for it and making me, you know, learn my learn my own way and, let, and make me make my own mistakes, you know. When you kind of get a lot very quickly as a young person, um, you take it for granted. Um, and I think that the, the change, the moment that kind of changed for me was when Connor sat me down and said, oh, I'm bringing in Adam Jones. And I was like, oh God, I'm never going to play now. <laughs> you know, we've got Collier, we've got Adam Jones, arguably one of the greatest tired props. And, um, and I was quite nervous actually. And I remember the first time meeting um, Adam was we were in the, in the gym up the top doing, I think, some skill session or fitness. And, and he came up to me and he said, you know, nice to meet you. Um, you know, I'm, I'm Bomb, his nickname. And I was like, nice to meet you too. I'm really, really big fan. I'm Kyle. And he was like, don't worry, I know who you are. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to help you. Um, and from that moment on, I was just, <laughs> he, he, probably got, he probably got annoyed with me. I was just following him around. Whatever he would do in the gym, I'm doing the exact same thing. If he's doing, you know, extra fitness, I'm doing extra fitness, if whatever extra scrummaging, you know, I'm speaking to him, I'm 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 picking his brains, I'm I'm literally trying to literally get every bit of knowledge out of him. I was I was probably a bit of an annoyance um at the time, but I just wanted to I just wanted to learn and, and that's kind of where I get my, my drive. Well not my drive, but my professionalism from is just like I, I see I see what, you know, your Chris Robshaws, your Mike Browns, your Danny Cares, your your Joe Marlers, your yeah, Adam Jones at the time, and I was like, okay, what are these guys doing? Okay, if it's good enough for them, then it, it has to be good enough for me because I'm I'm playing at Harlequins and I, I'm 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 always on the bench or, or not playing, so I need to change something. Otherwise, I'm just going to be 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 in that position for the rest of my life and be frustrated. So I just had to I just had to change, and um, I'd say since 2015, 2016, you know, literally every moment of the day. I wake up, I kind of have my routine and I know what I need to do for my body. I know what I need to do from a rugby perspective. And I'll just, I think the biggest thing for me is just taking real responsibility of your career and just being self-sufficient, you know, but obviously a lot of gratitude shown to, to those guys at the club, all the senior players that kind of paved the way for me. Um, and they probably don't even realize, um, realize because I just kind of kept it to myself, but I'm always really kind of watching those guys, seeing what they do. And um, 
I just try it. And if it works for me, it works for me. If it doesn't, then it doesn't. But I always give it a go, you know? Obviously, if your, your debut is um, is massive. I remember my first game um, was Gloucester away. And I was that was my first start. Everyone was really supportive. I remember Nick Easter kind of put his arm around me and kind of, you know, reassured me. Same with like Mo Fasivalu, um, looked after me a lot and, and kind of just pushed me in the right direction. Um, in the early part of my career and something now when I look back on it, especially in, in the current times we're in, you, you have a lot of time to contemplate and, and reflect. Um, and something that I am very grateful for is the patience from, from not just Harlequins, um, the rugby club, but, you know, the fans as well. And just kind of like the Harlequins wider community, everyone was so patient with me. You know, I feel like I've matured a lot and, and I understand where I went wrong. Um, but in the same breath, I'm, I'm thankful for those experiences because, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I am today without them, but also very thankful to Harlequins and show a lot of gratitude for to them because they, they were forever patient with me, you know, you, you, the likes of your Conor O'Shea's and your Collins, your Tony Dipros, <laughs> uh, John Kingston. I, honestly, I don't know how they put up with me sometimes. You know, some of the stuff. Graham Roundtree, when he was there. Um, so many things happened behind the scenes just um, that, you know, they could have given up on me, but you've always kind of just just kept plugging away, kept, kept pushing me in the right direction. Um, and always having my best interest at heart and, and, and forever staying patient with me as well and, and just showing their belief in me. I, I, as your career moves on, on you, you, you understand that you have to do things that are solely best for you. And I feel, I feel at this m current moment in, my, in time, not just in my career, but my life, that you know, where I'm at on a personal level and, and, and where I'm going, that Bristol will be the, the best place for me to to thrive. I, I, I just feel like for me, I just need to experience something different, be out of my comfort zone, be in uncomfortable situations in terms of not knowing my surroundings, building new relationships and, and really finding out who I am. Um, I'm just so grateful to, to the, to the friends that I've made, you know, um, you speak about the first year, you know, you're looking at Charlie Walker, your Jack Cliff, because you're George Merrick's, you're, your Jordan Turner Halls, your George Robsons, your Nick Easters, your Ollie Pones, your Mo Faster Valoos, your Carl Dixons, your Danny Cares, your Nick Evans, um, your Mike Browns, your Tommy Williams, your Hugo Monniers, um, you know, just just everyone really, your Joe Marlers, every Chris Robshaw, Will Skinner, Lukey Wallace, like it's just special, you know, it is a special place and 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 I think it's a testament to how how special rugby is as a sport. I'm just very, very grateful and I understand how lucky I am to, to be in the position I am in today. But with the understanding, I wouldn't be here without all the help of everyone at Harlequins and all the support they've always shown me. And um, yeah, it's going to, um, it's going to be different. Um, you know, going back to the stoop and, and not walking down the tunnel and turning left into the home changing room. Um, but it's, a, it's, it's definitely, um, memories that I'll cherish forever and you know a club that I understand has given me given me so much and I'm forever grateful and it will always be um, always be very very close in my heart you know Harlequins